Hello students, today we will discuss about the anterior triangle of neck. So let us discuss what you are going to see in the anterior triangle. So when you will see the side of the neck, now this side of the neck has been divided into the two part by a big muscle which you can see a oblique muscle. So here you can see that there is a oblique muscle and this muscle is known as sternocleidomastoid. Now this muscle divides the side of the neck into the two part. Now this is your anterior area which is known as anterior triangle and this is the posterior triangle. So today we will discuss this area that is the anterior triangle of neck. So when you will see the anterior triangle of neck, what are the important boundaries you should know first. So anteriorly you will have the midline of the neck. So this is the midline of the neck and this midline of the neck is forming the anterior boundary of your anterior triangle. Posteriorly you will find, I told you the muscle is the sternocleidomastoid, but the important thing is that it is the anterior border of sternocleidomastoid. Then base is formed by the, this is your uh, mandible and here you will have the sternum. So these two bones now comes in the picture. So the base is directed above and it is formed by the lower border of the mandible going up to the mastoid process and apex directed downward towards the suprasternal notch of manubrium. So in this diagram if you will see, now this is your anterior border of sternocleidomastoid. So this anterior border of sternocleidomastoid is forming the posterior boundary of triangle. Now this line which is the midline is the anterior boundary of triangle and this meeting point is the apex which is going towards the suprasternal area. Now this is the base of the mandible which is forming the upper part of the triangle up to the mastoid process. Clear? So in this way you will have the anterior triangle of the neck. Now this anterior triangle is having the roof. Now this is the one and very important thing which you have to keep in mind that uh, in the coming part we will divide this anterior triangle in the further smaller triangle. But whenever we are talking about the roof of this area, we are actually talking about the common uh, roof for any sub triangles of the anterior triangle. So what are the areas you will have? Now suppose if you will start dissection from uh, the outside, so first you have to remove the skin. So the roof means there those will come in the dissection anteriorly, that means superficial to the triangle. So what are the structures you will come across when you are dissecting the triangle? So first you will remove the skin. Below the skin you know that there is a presence of the superficial fascia. Now deep to the superficial fascia you will have one subcutaneous muscle which is known as platysma. Now this platysma is a very important feature you have to keep this thing in mind that platysma form the roof of your anterior triangle of the neck. And deep to the platysma you will have the deep fascia and here the name of deep fascia is investing layer. Now the important thing is that in this area, superficial layer, you will find some nerves. Now what are these nerves? First is the cervical branch of the facial nerve and second thing is the transverse branches which are the actually coming from the cutaneous nerves. So you have to keep this thing in mind that whenever we are talking about the roof, now here you can see in this image, now this is what you are doing. Uh, dissection and after removing the skin you are able to see these two subcutaneous muscles. Now the muscles which are present on the right and left side here, now this is your platysma here which you can see here, now this is also the fibers of platysma. So platysma is a subcutaneous muscle and deep to this platysma you will find this white color structure which is visible here, now this is the deep fascia of the neck. So what are the layers which we are going to see? Uh, when we are doing the dissection in the roof of the anterior triangle, skin, below the skin you will have the superficial fascia along with the subcutaneous muscle is known as platysma and deep to the platysma you will come across with this fascia which is known as investing layer of deep cervical fascia. Now next, here you have to see this image that now you are uh, seeing the neck from the front. Now when you will see the neck from the front, here you can see that these are the two sternocleidomastoid. So what you are able to understand that there are two triangle anteriorly, you have the right anterior triangle and left anterior triangle. So this is your midline. Now on both the side of the midline, you will have the anterior triangles and you can see in this anterior triangle, here you are able to appreciate this muscle. This is known as superior belly of omohyoid. 
this is the superior belly of homo hyoid and here you can see that this is the bone and this bone is the hyoid bone so you have to keep this thing in mind that when you will see from the front you are able to see the hyoid bone which lies below the mandible and you are able to see there are two muscles which are approaching this hyoid bone here and this is the hyoid, uh, homo hyoid muscle. Now this homo hyoid muscle comes from the scapula so here you can see that this is the scapula and near the suprascapular notch you can see that there is an inferior belly of homo hyoid. Both these bellies are connected to each other by a common tendon which lies deep to the sternocleidomastoid. So this is the inferior belly of homo hyoid, this is the superior belly of homo hyoid. So now when you are doing the dissection, you have to first understand that this is the mastoid process from here you will have the sternocleidomastoid and we are doing the dissection in this area which is known as anterior triangle. Now in this area when you will remove the skin, below the skin here you can see that there is a yellow line is visible, this is your subcutaneous fat. And below that subcutaneous area, you will find these fibers. These are the fibers of platysma. So if I am doing dissection in this area, I have to first remove the skin. Then you will have the fatty layer that is superficial fascia. Then you will have the subcutaneous platysma muscle. Now here you can see again, this is the your yellow color muscle which you can appreciate here. This is your platysma. And you have to keep this thing in mind that platysma present in the subcutaneous plane when you are doing dissection in the neck. Now in this image, if you will see layer by layer dissection, in, we will just play this video clip. Now first you have to dissect the skin. Now as soon as you will remove the skin, you have removed the subcutaneous fat also. You can see this yellow color area. Now you will find the platysma. Now this platysma when you will remove, you will find this white color layer. Now this is your deep fascia which is a uh, tough structure and this is known as investing layer of the deep cervical fascia. Now if you remove the deep cervical fascia, now you will uh, you are able to appreciate this oblique muscle that is the sternocleidomastoid. Now apart from that, in this uh, 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 video clip you are able to see that there are some uh, nerves and these nerves are ultimately piercing the deep fascia and they are entering into the superficial layer and they will supply the skin. Now what are the subdivisions of the anterior triangle of neck? So whenever you are reading the anterior triangle of the neck, you will subdivide the anterior triangle in the four small triangle. So what are the name of these four triangle? One is known as submental triangle, then digastric triangle, carotid triangle and muscular triangle. And these triangles are divided with the help of the two muscle. One is known as digastric and another is known as omohyoid and particularly superior belly of omohyoid. So now in this image, if you will mark these muscles, so you are able to understand that here is a muscle, now this is the digastric. Now di means two, so here you can see that it is having anterior belly, it is having posterior belly and both the bellies are connected at this point near the hyoid bone. In the same way from below you will find a belly is coming from the omohyoid. So this is your superior belly of omohyoid and I already told you that inferior belly of omohyoid comes from the scapula. So if you will see, this is the anterior triangle. Now this anterior triangle is now further divided into the four other triangle. Now this is your carotid triangle. Now this carotid triangle is lies below the posterior belly of digastric. Then you have this digastric triangle. Now this digastric triangle is also known as submandibular area. Then here you will have the submental triangle which is here and this will become the triangle which is known as muscular triangle, clear? So there are four triangle, what are they? Submental, digastric, carotid and muscular triangle. So let's discuss these triangle one by one. So in today's lecture, in this part, we will discuss the muscular triangle only. So when you are talking about the muscular triangle, what are the boundaries? So there is an anterior boundary, there is a posterior boundary and the posterior boundaries are divided into the two part, posterior superior boundary and posterior inferior boundary, clear? So in this image, if you will see and if I have to mark the muscular triangle, so anteriorly the muscular triangle is formed by the medial line which is going coming from the hyoid bone to the sternum. So where is the hyoid bone? Now this is the hyoid bone, this is the sternum. So if you will draw a vertical line, now this is become the anterior boundary of your muscular triangle, clear? So muscular triangle is having the line from the hyoid bone to the sternum. Now posteriorly you will have the two borders. 
Now this is the one border posteriorly and this is the other border posteriorly. Now this is known as postero superior, this is known as postero inferior. So which is the postero superior? Now this postero superior boundary is formed by the superior belly of homohyoid. While the postero inferiorly, now this boundary, now this postero inferior boundary is formed by the anterior border of sternocleidomastoid. So you have to keep this thing in mind that whenever we are talking about this muscular triangle, this muscular triangle is having the two muscles posteriorly, superiorly, superior belly of homohyoid, posteriorly and inferiorly the anterior border of sternocleidomastoid and anteriorly you will have an imaginary line which is connecting the hyoid bone to the sternum. Clear? Now we will talk about the floor of muscular triangle. So when you will talk about the floor of muscular triangle that means when you are doing deep dissection in this area you will find the muscles. Now there are few important muscles which are present in this area on both the side of the midline below the hyoid bone. So you have to understand this uh, thing that when you are talking about below the hyoid bone, the muscles which are present in the midline are known as infrahyoid muscle because you are going below the hyoid bone. So infra means below. So you have the four infrahyoid muscles. So these all four are termed as the infrahyoid muscle. So this is the first and easy thing to uh, understand that infrahyoid muscles forming the floor of muscular triangle. That means we are talking about below the hyoid bone. So below the hyoid bone you will have the sternohyoid, sternothyroid, thyrohyoid and homohyoid. Now here you can see that there is it two bones which names are coming here. One is the hyoid and another is the sternum. So you are having the muscles which are arising from the sternum and they are approaching to the hyoid bone. Now these four muscles are arranged in the two layer in front of the neck, one is the superficial layer and second is the deep layer. Now in superficial layer you will find the long muscle like sternohyoid and omohyoid and deep to that you will find the short muscle like sternothyroid and thyrohyoid. Now you have to keep this thing in mind that this is your hyoid bone, clear? Now this is the hyoid bone you have to first understand. We are not talking above the hyoid bone. We are talking below the hyoid bone. So this is the first thing which you have to understand. Second thing which you have to mark in mind that we are talking in front of the anterior belly of sternocleidomastoid. So I will talk in this area and will not go above the hyoid bone. That means we are talking about infrahyoid region in the midline. And you know that in midline in infrahyoid region, you will find the muscles which are known as infrahyoid muscle. So in this image, which infrahyoid muscles you are able to appreciate? So this is your omohyoid. Now you can see that this is the omohyoid which is approaching the hyoid bone. So this is the one superficial muscle. As soon as you will do the dissection in this anterior triangle of neck, uh, you will find that this is the first infrahyoid muscle is omohyoid. Now just adjacent to the omohyoid, you will find one long muscle which is known as strap muscle of your front of neck. And these if strap muscles are coming from the sternum. So this is the sternum and from the sternum, this muscle is going vertically upward and approaching this part of the hyoid bone. So it is known as sternohyoid, clear? So it is known as sternohyoid. So sternohyoid means it is arising from sternum and inserting on the hyoid muscle, hyoid bone. So these are the two superficial muscle. One is superior belly of homohyoid and second thing is sternohyoid. Now, when you will remove the sternohyoid, deep to the sternohyoid, you are able to see the thyroid cartilage. So here you can see that this is the thyroid cartilage and this is the laryngeal prominence which you can feel in center of your neck. That means the thyroid cartilage lies below the hyoid bone. Now this is the hyoid bone. So thyroid cartilage lies below the hyoid bone. So this is your hyoid bone and this is my laryngeal prominence. So thyroid cartilage is below the hyoid bone. So now what is happening here actually that this is your hyoid bone. Suppose this is the hyoid bone here. Now this is your sternum, clear? Now from the sternum to hyoid bone in center you are now having one more structure. Now this is your thyroid cartilage, clear? Now the muscle which is starting from sternum is approaching first to the thyroid cartilage. Now and the second muscle is coming from thyroid cartilage to the hyoid bone 
then this muscle is known as thyrohyoid. So this has become thyrohyoid and this has become sternothyroid. Clear? While sternohyoid is superficial and sternohyoid will start from sternum and directly go to the hyoid. So it will cover both these muscles. So when you will remove this muscle which is known as sternohyoid deep to that you will find two muscle. Now here you can see this is the junction. Now what is this lower muscle is become? This lower muscle is become the sternothyroid. And what is this upper muscle is become? Now upper muscle is become thyrohyoid. Clear? So this is the important thing to understand that whenever we are talking about the floor of your uh, muscular triangle, you will have the infrahyoid region and there are four muscles, omohyoid, then you will have sternohyoid, then you will have sternothyroid and thyrohyoid. Now what are the contents you will find in this area? Now when you will talk about the muscular triangle, in muscular triangle, you will find the thyroid gland, you will find the larynx, trachea and esophagus. So in this region, what are the contents you will have? You have the thyroid gland, you will have the larynx, you will have the trachea and esophagus. Clear? So now, at the end of this session of the anterior triangle of the neck, I hope you are having the basic idea that what is the anterior triangle, what are the boundaries of anterior triangle, what are the subdivisions of anterior triangle and we have talked about the muscular triangle, what is the floor of muscular triangle and boundaries of muscular triangle. In my next session, we will have the detailed about the carotid triangle which is a part of anterior triangle. So this is all for the session. Thank you.